Hello and welcome back. Today we're taking a look at this Home Next Works Bluetooth bath fan and speaker in one. This was purchased from the Home Depot for use in my family's house. It's Easter time, so came back home for Easter and they wanted me to replace their bath fan. So this is what we picked out at Home Depot. Let's see what we get in the box. There's a couple varieties of these and this is certainly not a sponsored video. As we see what comes, we've got our instruction manual. And then we've got our unit here, packaged with some styrofoam. Comes out like this. Get the styrofoam off either side. We've got a grill that goes separate. This is, has a Bluetooth speaker as well as a bath fan. So we've got our cover here. This is gonna be, should be largely cosmetic. And here within the cover, we can see we got our speaker assembly here. And we got a couple of wires here that are gonna plug in to be able to get it power and the connection to the rest of the fan unit. So this is gonna be for the LED light ring and this will be for the Bluetooth speaker. And then we've got our clips here. We'll have to figure out how these clips connect in on either side to be able to secure this up into the rest of the box. So white speaker with a white grill, the LED is in the ring around here. So that should hopefully work out fine. Looking at the fan motor, we see this is nice and clean. We know that's always an issue with older bath fans is it just collects lint and dirt and accumulates a bunch of crud in there. We've got a, a flapper here to help keep uh, moisture or other stuff going back the other direction through the vent. This is a nice soft plastic. So that should help keep things quiet. This is supposed to be a relatively quiet unit here. As we look at some of our wiring options, we've got our connectors here. This is what faces down towards the bathroom here. We've got our connection here for the speaker and for the fan. And then coming out the other end here on the side, this is what we're going to have to wire up. We've got these lever action or press fit wire nuts already installed. So we got our ground. And then these are all labeled here. So we've got the light, uh, light, fan, and fan. So you could obviously uh, figure out how you want to wire this if you want the fan and the light wired separately or wire them together and then you've got your ground that you could also tie in and there's four ports on that ground uh, nut there rather than three so you've got some options for how you want to wire this if you want to wire this with a fan operator independently of the light and vice versa and so with any of these here you can look at some of these in the box that always try to claim some of these will try to claim that they require that you don't have to get up in the attic to replace them I think that's bogus because any of the ones, most of the ones like that, you have to get that your exit pipe somewhere around uh, your output of your fan box there. This is no exception. This has some holes here on the side. You can just drop us in these little keyholes to be able to drop this in place uh, from up above. So that's all sealed there. So then when you're looking from above down, this is what you'd see because these wires here open up uh, down into your bathroom. So, it also includes screws to install it. A couple of key specs not listed on the outside of the box. The ceiling open here needs to be seven and a half by seven and a quarter by seven and a quarter inch of vertical height clearance. And then the other important detail here is the pin on the speaker is pin zero, 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 zero. Of course, that's usually one of your two default keys. The other one being one, two, three, four. If you're ever trying to guess a pass key on a Bluetooth speaker. Of course, the usual precautions here when using electricity Make sure you got the power disconnected before proceeding. If you don't feel comfortable doing electrical work, always call a competent professional and make sure you know how to disconnect the power from your existing unit. Here's the old unit we're gonna be replacing. Let's remove the screw holding the decorative cover on this one. It's always faded. And this was probably installed in about 1986 based on the age of this house. And we can see the lovely existing unit. It's got the rectangular hole. You can see we're obviously gonna to have to get to this from up in the attic to finish the removal process here and then drop in the new unit. So the rest of this is gonna have, have to proceed from up in the attic. The basic tools we need for this project are gonna start with a drill. This makes it easier for installing and removing uh, the device. You may need some sort of a longer screwdriver or a prying device if your old unit was stapled in, which this one was. Uh, you also want some foil tape to be able to seal up any gaps in the openings and to make sure your exit 
where your outflow uh, discharge pipe is properly sealed to the unit. So get this foil tape. I know it's a little expensive, but it's definitely worth it. You also want a pair of wire strippers to be able to, pop, uh, in case you need to rewire this or to be able to clean up your old connection that can also cut wire. You also want to know where your circuit breaker is in your house. And one of the best ways to test for that is to have one of these non-contact voltage or these, uh, these uh, voltage detectors that you can just touch with your hand and be able to know if it's hot or not. This is a uh, Fluke one. It's come in a variety of forms. They're relatively cheap. You also want some electrical tape that will seal up your connections. And in my case, I also needed some of these self-piercing screws to be able to reattach the duct and adjust the ducting going out with that to get that the exhaust going properly out of the attic. As well as some screwdrivers and just your nimbleness getting through the attic. When you're in the attic to deal with insulation, you also need safety glasses. You also make sure you're wearing long sleeves and a respirator because you don't want to breathe in that dust in your attic. So that's the basic uh, pieces here. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna take the camera in the attic with me to show you the complete installation. So now we're gonna jump to the final product. Here's a look at the fan that came out of the attic. Now in this case here, this was actually stapled to the rafter. I'm sorry I didn't get any video inside. This was stapled here, so I had to pry it out. There's some of these units you can buy where they advertise no attic access required. I think that's baloney, because by the time you make sure you get your duct work, your duct connection here all sealed up, because this one has a fixed pipe that goes uh, out for the venting to complete the vent. And to be able to connect that, there was no way that could have been done uh, below, uh, the, uh, below the attic. So in any of these boxes you look at that say no attic access required, I think that's baloney. Uh, the other thing to pay attention to that was a small issue is on this one, so there's this kind of standard box size of seven and a quarter by seven and a half, give or take, on this here. But in this case here, the ears on either side, the mounting ears were on the long edge on the one I'm installing, it's actually on the short edge. So I had to rotate it 90 degrees and put an extra little splice in to be able to get that to hold correctly. So if you're gonna install one of these, make sure you take stock of which side your dog ear is on and if the unit you buy is actually adaptable to it. Or if you need to come up with some other shimming device or add another uh, little splice between two of your rafters in your attic, you may have to do that and be prepared to do that. The new device is much quieter than this. This was just rattly and noisy. And I'm glad I made the update for my parents. Here we are after installation of the unit. Let's turn it on and you can listen. As you heard, it does play a chime when it turns on for the first time. I discovered it's a little finicky with pairing a little bit if you're gonna pair more than one phone. Still works, yet, but it can only have one phone paired at a time and you have to turn it off and back on again before you can switch to a different phone. And there may need to be some rule or etiquette rules about pairing and unpairing or disconnecting after you're done using. We had an issue in testing this earlier where one individual had it paired from the night before, did not remove it from their phone, and upon startup the next morning, someone else was not able to connect to it with their phone. So there might be some etiquette rules around your house if you do something like this about who is currently paired or connected to the Bluetooth speaker in the device. Otherwise, it sounds great. Due to copyright rules, I'm not gonna play any other music through it, but it's, it's not the best quality speaker. It's a bathroom speaker. You can do some other things like you can connect it via Bluetooth to a Google Home Mini or another Google Home to be able to transmit commands there. So I think it's another novel use for it but it's very quiet and the light that it puts off is actually really nice and soft. It's about a 4,000 Kelvin, give or take on the LED ring. Uh, works great. And I hope you found this video useful and informative about this bathroom fan. Have a great day, bye.